if you had to choose the place to put your garden based on one single factor, this is what it should be. Today we are talking about how to choose the right location for your garden and I'm going to tell you about one specific factor that I believe is the most important factor. All week long we're going to be talking about locations and I'll have some other factors for you to consider. I'm Amy Landers with Gardens That Matter where we help families create beautiful, bountiful gardens together and it is springtime officially. The weather report looks like we may be almost out of frost time, although I'll wait to plant my tomatoes a little bit longer, but definitely all of our, everything, the peas are up, the lettuce is up, we're going to put some broccoli in, um, good things happening out in the garden. If you are starting or starting a new garden area and you're trying to decide where to put it, this week we're going to have tips for you each day, a quick tip um, to help you think about what to consider when you are choosing your spot. If you want to dig in and do even more garden planning and getting ready for the season with some understanding, a really solid understanding of the basics, we're doing a seven day challenge and I enjoy, invite you to join it if you haven't done that with us yet. There's a link in the description of this video. Now let's get to that number one reason. We're starting with what I believe is the most important factor in choosing the location of your garden and that is convenience. When you are putting your garden into your landscape, put it somewhere where it's convenient, where you're going to see it every day. So what does that mean? It means by your back door, by your car, maybe in the front yard, near, next to the driveway, or next to the mailbox. Um, there's other things you'll need to, to think about too, but overall, when you're choosing between multiple places, convenience is going to really help you be successful. As you're choosing your places for your garden, let it be plural. You can have more than one growing area. It doesn't have to be a big garden with rows or huge garden beds. You can have multiple small beds, multiple planting areas around your yard and putting them in places where you're gonna see them every day and notice them every day makes a big difference. Um, it will help you be more successful. So as you guys are jumping on, I see a couple of you guys on live, let me know who you are by commenting and telling me, do you have a place for your garden yet? And do you see it every day? Um, I would love to hear about where you are growing already, or maybe if you're weighing some factors, tell me about that in the comments. If you're watching the recording, I'll come back and look at these. So feel free to add comments later on too. Now, one of the things that I love is our garden is, um, we have a couple different growing areas, but the main one is right outside our back door and it's right next to our kids' play area. So if you are a mom or a dad or a grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle and you have kids around when you are gardening, it is so convenient to have the garden be near the kids' play area. <clears throat> In fact, if you don't have a kids' play area near your garden, think about adding one. Maybe you can put in a sandbox or put in a water table or something that could be, you know, you could bring some little trucks or balls over with you because our kids will garden with us to some extent. <laughs> But the other day we were planting a bunch of strawberries on Saturday. We had ordered, we had a hundred strawberries that we put in. And so they stuck with me probably for the first 20 and then they were done. And some of it was kind of, uh, you know, some of the work needed to be a little more detailed. I had to like make sure that the roots were getting, they were bare root plants. So I had to make sure the roots were getting spread out in the holes. So it really worked well for them to be in the water table because it was a warm day. And so that we've got a little water table that they fill with rocks and sand and pine cones and water. <laughs> and they're just kind of a muddy mess by the end, but that's okay. Because even if they were in the garden with me, they'd be a muddy mess, right? Do your kids love to get messy in the garden? Totally awesome. And we're totally for that. <laughs> um, but in any case, we are definitely excited to have them out there with us and we want them to have a place that is safe and and they a yes space for them so having our garden near their play area or vice versa putting a play area near their garden is such a great way for us to do that so a great way to make it convenient so i would love to hear from you in the comments down below um what makes a garden convenient for you? When you have your spaces, are there certain parts of your yard that you go to more often? Um, if you already have some garden, a garden area or multiple garden areas, do some of them get more love than others? And is convenience a factor in that? 
In my, in my garden, in my experience, it is. So as you're choosing your garden space, we'll talk about other factors this week, but let convenience be your number one factor. Put it where you will see it and pay attention to it and water it when it's needed and weed it when it's needed and harvest. That's the best part, right? You'll see when things are ready to harvest. Put them in a convenient spot. All right, we will be back again later this week. If you have questions, we'll be back tomorrow, actually, not even just later this week. We'll be back each day this week. Um, if you have questions about other garden stuff, feel free to put those in the comments as well. I love to have your questions to help us decide what to talk about in future uh, broadcasts. So thanks so much for joining me, and until next time, happy gardening.